Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I organise my cue template and project structure for the independent film Asking God. I will also share my technique for how I updated cues when I received revisions of the film from the director. So to start off with, let's have a look at the folder structure of the final film and then I'll show you how I built up to that. So you can see here what we've got is a full list of all of the cues and I'm using the standard notation here, 1M and then a cue number. M being it's a music cue because you could have sound effects cues. One at the beginning is usually a real number. Now in this particular film we didn't have multiple reels so it's just one all the way through. And then you'll notice that I'm using 0102. That just means that it orders quite nicely up to 99 which hopefully I wasn't going to ever get to more than 100 cues. So you can see this is the folder structure. We've got all of the projects here for all of the cues. We've got the audio files, we've got the movie files here. So this is actually the lock video that I got from the director. So let's go about showing how I set up this structure. What you might see at the top here is there's this 1M00 template, and that's actually how I created all of the cues. It's instead of using a logic template, we're using a template project, and I'll explain a little bit why that happens in a moment. So let's go about creating one of these projects. So the template I used in the film is a variation of the one from Spitfire Audio's BBC SO. So you can download this from the Spitfire Audio, the page, and I'll give a link below. Here is the logic template. So this is the one that I'm using. So let's create a first template file. So this is everything we need now. What I would probably now do is come in here and change whatever sounds that I wanted if I wanted to add things that I was going to use frequently in this but it's got generally all the right bussing structure, all of the things that I'm going to need to use. And Christian and Jake do a really great tutorial of how to use this template. So let's go ahead and save this out. So just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to pretend I'm on the first cut of the film. Now, the important part here is to use this folder structure. The package structure is very useful if you want to have all of your assets in one place and you want to send the whole lot around. But for a multi queue project, we really want to have this folder structure so that we can reuse assets. So let's save that now. Let's have a look at how that looks on the file system. So you can see it's created this folder and it's created this file. So what I'm going to do now is just rename this one file into the template. So now what we also need in this folder structure is the movie files. I'm just going to copy one from the final cut. So you see we've now got audio files and movie files. So let's load up this 1M00 template again. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got the bar 5 synchronised to the start of the queue. So what we want to do is simply position here. We're going to put 01 enter. And that's to make sure that bar 5 is aligned with the first hour. Let's now go and import the movie. File movie and because we have the movie files directory we can just go movie files we want to line this up also to make sure that the movie itself is also starting at zero one and now we're going to extract the audio from this because we've imported the audio this way we need to mute the audio of the video itself so movie project settings and hit mute there are other ways of doing this, of course. This is the way in which I was doing it when I set up my template. So this is great. We've now actually got bar five lining up. We've got also the time codes all lining up. Let's just take a quick look at the movie because it's always good to see that. So we've got 001, 001. So these should all be tracking together as I move forward and backwards. We should see that our time codes are all lining up between what logic thinks and what is burnt into the film itself. I've got a video about burning in time codes. If you would like to check it out, I'll link below. So let's now put this back to five and I'm going to save the template. And now for each cue that I wanted to write, I would simply just copy this file. So let's say we're doing Q5. My new queue. It's really useful both to use the number of the queue but also have some sort of description in the name otherwise you kind of forget what files are which. So let's open that one up and now all I'm going to do is let's say we want to start this at 22 minutes in. So this is now taking me to 22 minutes and now obviously I can just go in and start writing the queue. And the reason why I do this copy method is because the movie and the audio files come with it in a nice way. So this seems to work a lot better than doing new from template every single time. 
Now, the next tricky part of this is when it comes to reconforms. So a reconform is when you get a new cut of the film and you need to realign your music. You might need to shorten sections, you might need to do various other things. So let's have a look at how I was doing that. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to take cut three and I'm going to reconform it to cut four. So first thing I did is take all the original cues that I had from cut three and I'm going to copy the entire directory structure and I'm going to name it four. OK, so this is exactly the same as what was cut three. And the first thing we want to do is in the movie files, we need to add the fourth cut. So let me go and grab that. And now we're going to update the template file so that we can start reconforming the other cues. So what we want to do is now do a very similar thing to what we did with the original template. We're going to switch from the third cut, MP4, to the main cut, fourth version. Make sure that's all nicely lined up. And now we need to extract the audio again. Then we can go over to the audio files. We can delete the third cut version from it and delete this track. In the way I configure this, I also have this track going to a particular bus. So I have this going out to bus 203. Again, a very quick check to make sure that all of our time codes are lining up. So again, we can see 0, 0, 001. And as we move through, that's nicely lining up here and here. So that's great. That template is good to go. So we hit save. And this means that if I have more cues still to write on this particular cut, I can just do the same as I did before and just copy this template. But let's go and now reconform another project. I'm going to reconform this cue 1M14. And so again, you can see that we have in the time code positions, we've got things lined up 0, 01, 23. So this is the start of the queue. And the first thing that I would do is I would just take a quick look at the film. So let's just bring the film in shot just to see where the start of the queue is, right? So we can see that it's these flagpoles is our kind of visual reference as to where we're going to be realigning things. I did a few of these reconforms once and forgot where the film actually was supposed to line up. So this is what first thing to do is just note where we're actually going to line that up. This is a little bit of a fiddly thing to do. I'm going to actually write down each of the steps in the comments below so that you can follow along. So what I'm going to do is first off copy the current 70 position of the start of the queue. And I'm going to go and put it into the notes section. So you can see I've done this before. I'm going to delete that one, put in the version that we have here. Now, what we need to do is we're going to go back to the event list and we're going to set the whole of the start of the queue back to zero one. So zero one 1 and enter, and you can see we're right at the very beginning of the film. This is important so that when we do the switching, we can switch things back. This was the only way I could make this actually work well in Logic, because one of the things Logic doesn't like to do is put things before the very beginning of bar 1, uh, except when you're moving the sympathy marker around. So we have to do it this way. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the movie. So file, movies, and we're going to do main cut fourth version. So the same as we did when we had the template, we need to remember to mute this because we're going to use the audio imported. And now to get the audio into this queue, we don't actually want to extract the audio. Otherwise, we're just going to have loads and loads of copies of the same audio sitting around in the audios files directory. So instead, I'm going to select this first track and I'm going to import the audio from the template project. So over here, back into audio, we go to all files. So this is one of the trip hazards here. It's in cut three. I want to go into the cut four. Easy way of doing that is to click this project button. And now we're in cut four. So now we're going to use the template from cut four. And you can see we've got the main cut four version. So I actually want all of the things here. I want the IO, the content, everything. There's a handy way of doing that. If you do option and click, it selects almost everything except for keep bus number. So we need to do that. And now we're going to add that into the project. Having done that, we don't need the third cut audio anymore. So again, we come over here, delete that file from the project. We can also delete this track. And as I mentioned before, I send those uh, tracks to bus 203. Now, the joy of having imported it in the way I just did, that's all set up already because we got it from the template. So now we go back to bar five 
and we're going to realign the film. So this is where the note comes in handy. Back to the notes, we've got this time code. I'm going to go back to the event list. I'm going to paste that in here. And this was the position where this cue started time code wise in the last cut. But if we look at the film itself, you can see it's a different scene. So I'm going to have to go and adjust and find where the right place is. And here are those flagpoles. Now we're going to get a bit more accurate with the frames. And there we are, we have it nicely lined up. Then I can obviously play back this cue and see if it's going to need any adjustments itself, changing the tempo, changing anything to make it fit this particular uh, version of the scene. So I know that some composers do a dual DAW version of this where they have Logic running just the music and then they put the video files into Pro Tools and then they synchronise those two DAWs and everything works in that fashion. But for me, I don't have Pro Tools and I actually wanted to see if I could do all of this in the box of Logic Pro. And so this is a, a technique that worked for me. I would love to hear your experience of project organisation and if you have any questions about the techniques I shared, so please use the comments section below. Do you try to keep your music and video in one tool or do you use multiple tools for the job? How do you approach reconforms and what sort of challenges have you had to overcome? If you've enjoyed this video then do give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.